Hi, I'm Paris, and I recently finished reading this book, The Nitric Oxide Solution. If you're not familiar with nitric oxide, in your body it's an important component for expanding your blood vessels, allowing blood to flow better throughout your body. And the idea behind the book is if you have better circulation, you'll have better health. And to improve your nitric oxide levels, there are certain foods you can eat, certain supplements you can take, and certain lifestyle changes you can make. The authors are Nathan Bryan and Janet Zand, and I'll link to this book down below the video. Now you may have heard of nitric oxide in relation to one medication you can take that really increases your nitric oxide level, and that's nitroglycerin. People take that when they have narrowed coronary arteries, and by really increasing the nitric oxide level quickly, it allows those to expand, you get more blood flow to the heart, and you reduce the pain you might be experiencing. Now I'll just interject here that I'm not a doctor, so before making diet or lifestyle changes you should consult with your doctor. However, Nathan Bryan, PhD, is at the School of Medicine, University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston, and is one of the world's foremost experts on nitric oxide. So I do put some stock in what they say in this book. It is pretty much accepted fact that increasing your plasma level of nitric oxide will allow your blood vessels to expand. That will improve your circulation. What that can do for certain conditions may be a little more subject to more tests and experiments in the future, but the book says that increasing your nitric oxide level can help with high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, kidney disease, Alzheimer's disease, and again, as my understanding is, it's pretty much due to circulation. If you have better circulation in the brain, you may have better capacity for flushing out the debris that they think clogs things up in there and is one of the contributing factors to Alzheimer's disease. If you have diabetes, that can impair your circulation. So I don't know if the nitric oxide helps directly with the diabetes, but it can help with one of the effects of diabetes, which is you can develop poor circulation. Anyhow, there's lots of upsides to increasing your nitric oxide levels and improving your circulation. The question though for me is, which is the best way to do it? I've been making a lot of dietary and lifestyle changes over the past year and lost a fair amount of weight and my health has improved. But what started me down that path was some heart issues and so I have a particular interest in this and how it relates to the heart. Now what I'm testing out in this video with the help of these test strips from Human N nitric oxide test strips. You just put a little saliva on them and they tell you the current level of nitric oxide in your saliva. That does not necessarily correlate directly with your plasma blood levels of nitric oxide, but unless you want to be poking yourself and running down to a lab, this is probably the easiest way to test it out several times a day. So the test is going to be comparing having a meal, a large salad of spinach and kale. Kale is, according to the book, they have a chart I'll show you in a little bit, showing the foods you can eat that will do the most to boost your nitric oxide levels. And kale is far and above all of the rest. But I don't like the taste of kale, so I'm going to mix the kale and the spinach, which I think is the number two or three item on the list, and see if a big bowl of that will have an effect on my nitrous oxide level. Then I'm going to compare a couple products. They're not supplements, but they're not whole foods because they are processed. One is Juice Performer 100% Beet Juice, and the other is Beat It Sport Nitrate 400. This is a concentrated beet juice. It's kind of syrupy and incredibly sweet, but this one in the production, they actually measure the amount of nitrate, so they guarantee you're going to have an effect from this. But some of the studies you may have seen the last couple of years about athletes being able to increase their endurance, have better oxygenation of their muscles and so forth when they're taking a beet juice, this is the one that, this exact one, is the one that they usually use in those studies. They're both available to order online, about three something dollars each. You can find out more about them at the link down below this video. But they're not whole foods in the way that spinach and kale are whole foods, even just regular beet juice without the concentration. Still, that's beets that have had the liquid content removed, so you're taking out most of the fiber and some of the other elements of the food. So what I'm looking for in these tests is, is there an indication, according to these nitric oxide saliva test strips, of my nitric oxide levels going up when I consume each of these three items? Then. How much does it go up? How fast does it go up? And how long does it stay elevated before it goes back down? Also, what is my baseline nitric oxide level? Maybe I already have fairly high levels because I eat a plant-based whole foods diet. So it'll be interesting to see. Now my regular diet includes spinach salads, not the kale, maybe once every other day. And I also drink beet juice occasionally. So I'm going to cut those out for a couple days and let my baseline level return to what it would be without any of those foods in it and then I'll start testing. When I first got up this morning, I did one of the test strips before I'd eaten or had anything to drink. 
And here's the color on the test strip compared to the chart on the bottle. I thought it matched with the middle one, but I asked my daughter. She thinks it matches with the lowest one. This is depleted. This is low. This is optimal. It's almost lunchtime now, so I'm going to do another test strip. I didn't eat anything this morning that should have upped my nitric oxide levels, but just to verify that, let's see. And then later today, I will eat something that I'm anticipating will raise my nitric oxide level, and I'll test it a couple hours later and later at night. The test strip itself is just this little portion at the end. The rest of it is just to hold on to, and you're not supposed to put it into your mouth, so I'm gonna get some saliva on my finger and apply it to that little pad at the end. Okay, here we go. Let's see what color we get. This one over here is my test strip from first thing this morning. Pretty much the same color, right? So I'm ready to have lunch and I'm going to choose the foods to optimize my nitric oxide production from this nitric oxide index. Supposedly fashioned after the glycemic index, which lets you know which foods will tend to spike your blood sugar. This is a listing. It's not really clear in what units it is, what these numbers exactly represent. So I'm guessing they're just comparative as to which foods will boost your nitric oxide the most. Number one by a mile is kale. Number two, Swiss chard has only a third as much as kale. And number four listed spinach, which I do eat weekly but not daily, has only half as much nitric oxide potential as Swiss chard. And the numbers drop down into the hundreds from there. So if you really want a boost of nitric oxide, it looks like you want to stick to these greens, these first few. So my lunch is going to be half kale and half spinach. Why not all kale? because I don't like it very much. Spinach is okay, kale I really don't care for. This is a five ounce bag of kale. This is a big bin of spinach. I'm going to make my salad in this bowl. So I think I'll get at least half this bag. So about four ounces of kale and then about four ounces of spinach, I think. Maybe a little more spinach. Okay, it's been 30 minutes since my kale and spinach lunch. And I haven't brushed my teeth. Hopefully I don't have spinach showing somewhere. And here's what the test strip shows. Whoa, that is a lot darker. I think I'm definitely up at the optimal level now, or possibly even, and I discovered this little marker down here when I pulled the rest of the label off. This color indicates a spike of nitric oxide after eating a meal with lots of nitric oxide production. Maybe it's not quite that dark. But yeah, pretty much up here. It's optimal, I think, and that's 30 minutes after finishing eating. All right, it's been another 30 minutes. Oh, it's still really bright. Comparing it to the chart, I would say definitely still up in optimal. Okay, it's another hour later, so this is two hours since I had my spinach and kale salad. Still showing really good color. It's been six hours since I had the kale and spinach lunch. I think my nitrous oxide levels are still up here in the optimal range. It is the next morning, I haven't had anything to eat. Actually, this is the test strip from last night. This is the one that I just put my saliva on. Really hasn't changed very much. This is a test strip from 30 minutes after having my spinach and kale salad. So it definitely has gone down from that, but it seems to have evened out. And almost 20 hours after having that salad, I think my nitrous oxide is still in the optimal level. It's now 48 hours since I had that spinach and kale salad that did a pretty good job of boosting my nitric oxide levels. Two full days later, I can't imagine they're still just as boosted, but let's have a look. I realize the shirt I'm wearing kind of makes this color look a little dimmer, but it really has gone back to dim. Let me compare it to the very first sample that I took. So this is my test strip from just before having that kale and spinach salad. So the first day with no boost at all. And this is the one I currently did 48 hours later. Boy, just about the same shade. And that shade is depleted, low, Mm, right in between the two again, maybe. So somewhere between 20 and 48 hours after having that salad, my numbers really went back down, all the way back down to where they were at the beginning. So that's good information to have about how long the boost lasts. And now I'm ready to start my next boost with beet juice. For this, I'm using an 8.4 fluid ounce can of beet juice. I'll drink this over the course of five or 10 minutes, and then I'll follow up the same pattern as I did after that kale and spinach salad. I never drank beet juice in my life until about maybe six, seven months ago. And then I started 
and I've actually developed a taste. I actually like it now. All right, 30 minutes after an eight ounce can of beet juice, let's see what the test strips show. That's looking pretty bright. I would say it's pretty much in optimal range, maybe low optimal. And one hour after drinking an eight ounce can of beet juice, maybe a little bit darker, a little bit more clearly in the optimal range. Here's the 30 minute test strip. This is the one hour test strip. And two hours after the beet juice. Still looking pretty good. I would say it's right up about the middle of optimal. It's been six hours since I had the beet juice. Let's see how the saliva looks now. Still pretty bright. Let's compare it to the chart. I would say I am still up in optimal level. It's the next day after drinking the beet juice. It's been about 23 hours. Well, that's looking quite a bit lighter. Here's the one at six hours after the beet juice, and this is the one at 23 hours after the beet juice. Seems like the nitric oxide level is dropping faster after the beet juice than it did after the meal of spinach and kale. I would say at about 23 hours after the beet juice, we're down to somewhere maybe on the edge of low and depleted. And 48 hours after drinking the can of beet juice, let's see how the saliva looks. A little bit of color there. I'm afraid I'm down to depleted. Well, I think it matches up between low and depleted, which is pretty much back where it was right when I started. So this would be a good time to try out Beat It Sport Nitrate 400. This is a beet juice shot. Smells like beet syrup. Mm. Just a little thicker and they could have called it cough syrup. I'll take a couple minutes to drink this one. Then I'll be back in 30 minutes and test and see how my nitric oxide levels look. It's been half an hour since I finished my beet juice shot. Let's see what the test strip show. Whoa, that's a lot of color. This is definitely optimal level, maybe even a little higher, not quite to this nitric oxide spike that they list, but definitely optimal or even a little more. And one hour after the beet juice shot. Still pretty good color. Still way up here in optimal. And two hours after drinking the beet juice shot, still looking pretty dark. Still well up in optimal. And 24 hours after having the beet juice shot, not too bright a color. Definitely back down to low. And 48 hours after having the beet juice shot, very light pink it looks like. Comparing it to the chart, we're definitely down to the low depleted range. So what's the takeaway from those tests? What's the best way for me to increase my nitric oxide level and hopefully see some of the benefits mentioned in this book? Looks like it's the spinach kale salad. Now it didn't have quite as high an increase right away as I saw with the beet juice, but it lasted longer. Also, as I mentioned, I'm working on a whole foods, plant-based diet, and I'm trying to get away from processed foods. So beet juice itself, I think with this, I'm getting a lot more sugar without the fiber mixed in that helps slow the digestion. And that does concern me a little bit. Most supermarkets do have beet juice. This beet shot's a little harder to find. At least regular beet juice is less processed than this one. But if you're doing your own testing or if you're an athlete looking to eke out every last bit of performance, you might wanna try the beet it shots. Again, I'll link to both of these down below this video, as well as the human test strips, as well as the book about nitric oxide. As for spinach and kale, you can find that in just about any supermarket. Let some find its way into your lunch or dinner and see how you feel. And I'll see you on the next review.